Hello again, uh, my name is Dan Brook, a retired academic and clergy living in Hudson. And uh, we're happy to present another episode, really, in our series of conversations with clergy. Uh, if you've watched us before, you know that uh, we recognize that the role of religion in society is an extraordinarily important role. It's one of the five social institutions around which human needs are met. And uh, in this day and time, if you watch the uh, public airwaves, uh, probably politics and uh, economics uh, predominate with lesser attention to uh, things like uh, education and religion, for example, and even family to some degree. But we're the religion uh, aspect of, uh, of uh, a social institution. And as a part of that institution, uh, most uh, aspects of it finally are defined in terms of the role of the professional uh, clergy. So that often in a small town or any size town or any community that serves parishes, uh, the parish tends to be identified uh, in large part by the visibility and the reputation of its uh, leaders, usually a pastor. And, and so we recognize that role. It's not always an easy role, often it isn't. But uh, today we have the honor of uh, interviewing another clergy from Hudson, uh, Stephanie Anthony, who is pastor at First Presbyterian Church. And uh, without uh, further babbling on my part, we'll start a conversation with her and welcome you to this little conversation, Stephanie. Thanks. I wonder if you could uh, just start the conversation uh, uh, with how in the world uh, a young woman who was born and raised in part in Maryland and for much of it moved to Florida uh, and really had an interest in biology as well as religion, uh, finally decided to become a pastor. Sure, sure. Well, I, uh, I, I grew up, for the most part, like you said, in Florida. We moved, to, my family there moved when I was about seven years old, so second grade, um, and uh, found myself in a church community, not so much because my family was very active in a church community, but I started spending the night at a friend's house, and her family went to worship or to Sunday school on Sunday mornings. So if I spent the night Saturday night, I ended up going to church. And they happened to be church shopping and church hopping, so I visited a number of congregations with them, um, and, and one of those being a Presbyterian church that, for some reason, um, just struck me. And I, I liked to go to that Sunday school classroom. I didn't even know there was anything beside a Sunday school classroom. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I knew about. And, I, and so I, I got to the point that I would um, ask my mother to drop me off at Sunday school. And so she'd wake up on Sunday and help me get there if I wanted to get there and went pretty regularly for a number of years. And sort of was raised in the context of that congregation, um, but not necessarily so much with my family being particularly active in it. Mm. So when I went off to college, I, uh, uh, I sought out the Presbyterian Church there because that's what I knew, and I had gotten involved in our denominational structure a little, a little beyond the congregation as a, as a young person, and was involved in campus ministry and, and all those sorts of things. Never had any plans beyond, uh, beyond science. That really was my, my love, my love for learning. Came uh, wholeheartedly in biology walked on to that campus, um, a biology major, and never never wavered away from that, but, um, really, most of the time I was there, um, but was involved in the life of a, of a church, mm -hmm. and campus ministry and congregational life, too, teaching Sunday school and youth group and things like that. Um, but towards the end of, oh, about the middle of my first semester of my senior year, when uh, applications are being made to graduate school, and I was trying very hard to focus on these applications for a, a master's degree or PhD in biology, um, writing up some of the research I had done and been a part of, I just couldn't fill out the forms. Just more than my usual procrastination, <laughs> could not get it done. And I uh, was on a field trip one day um, on a boat in the, we were, it was, it was in the Williamsburg, Virginia, so the James River, we're out on a field trip for the vertebrate biology class, and there was a young man, it's a graduate student, who was counting fish, and that's what his research was, was you know, pulling in fish in the nets and counting them, and he was thrilled with this job, and he loved it, and we were on this field trip for four boring hours <laughs> watching this young man count fish and measure them, and that was the whole thing, but he was in love, he was in love, and I started to think on the back of that boat, oh my gosh, 
what could I do that I would talk about so passionately that it would bore other people, <laughs> although that's not really my goal in life now, but <laughs> at the time, what could I talk about for four hours? Because I like this microbiology, but I don't think I could talk about it for four hours. Um, but all through college, I was at a state institution. I took religion classes from a, you know, a, mm -hmm. more of a secular standpoint, church mm -hmm. history, scripture, um, other religions beyond Christianity, mm -hmm. lots of, lots of uh, religion classes to a point that I almost had a minor in, mm -hmm. in, the, in it. Um, and uh, I realized that's what I could talk about for four hours. Mm. That's what I could bore someone with <laughs> if I were trying to bore someone. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that day, uh, booked a ticket to go visit a seminary or a divinity school, actually, that one of my favorite uh, religion professors had, had been to as a graduate student um, for, in church history. And uh, went to visit it, had no desire to go to that school, but, mm. but knew at that point that mm -hmm. I was being called to something, mm -hmm. something different. Mm. And, and I feel like God sort of eased me into it. I was looking at um, uh, medical mission type things where I could kind of blend this love of mm -hmm. science and, and faith and uh, eventually worked on a little bit of a public health degree while I was in seminary, mm -hmm. thinking maybe there's some medical missionary work that, mm -hmm. that I could be a part of. And then sort of eased into parish ministry idea. Um, finally, by the time I was almost ready to graduate, I was ready to go into a church and, and, and do things on the ground. Now, where were, where did you go for undergraduate study? I was at the College of William and Mary. Is that a state yeah, school? It is. It's it a is. Virginia state school. Is that right? Yeah. Old one, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and why did you pick that originally? Um, I, I knew that I was ready to get out of Florida, mm -hmm. culturally, mm -hmm. geographically, mm -hmm. climate. I mm -hmm. can't stand. <laughs> um, and so I was looking. I was looking other places. I had visited uh, Williamsburg uh, with my father, who lived in Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in middle school sometime, uh -huh. and it, it felt like college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it just that yeah. the campus feels like college. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. then when I got into high school and started to look at schools, I knew it was a, a good mm -hmm. place to be. And, mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of some of the other schools I was looking for outside of the state of Florida, mm -hmm. um, financially affordable mm -hmm. for, for our family. I, I counted as an in-state student for, my, for tuition, so that helped a lot. Um, so yeah. And, and right after college, did you go directly into the I seminary? went straight into seminary, yeah. yeah. And which one did you I was choose? at Columbia Theological Seminary. It's a Presbyterian school in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. how, does, how does it relate compared to the other uh, Presbyterian seminaries? In? In just generally, is it a large one? Oh. Uh, considered a better one? Uh, has a graduate program in it? It's just a good, sure. good general seminary. Sure. It, um, Gosh, if I have to think about it that way, it uh, it's uh, probably in the medium size. Mm -hmm. My class had about sixty to sixty-five students mm -hmm. when we entered, mm -hmm. um, and some changed mm -hmm. in and out in that time mm -hmm. frame before we graduated. But um, um, size, it's smaller than than Princeton, which is I think mm -hmm. our largest mm -hmm. of our seminaries. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, it's it was traditionally a Southern school, so mm -hmm. the denomination, mm -hmm. like many American denominations, split over the mm -hmm. Civil War. So it was. Mm -hmm. Initially, a Southern school. Uh, about the time that I went, it was becoming younger and younger, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. um, which was uh, a change in the mm -hmm. in the norms in terms of mm -hmm. people who are going into who are ministry. Going. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I started, there were four of us who came straight out of college. Mm -hmm. I mean, had just mm -hmm. graduated that May, and mm -hmm. we started in mm -hmm. July. And uh, the next year, I think there were twelve or fifteen. Oh. And then the year after that, they were up to 20 to 30. Prior to um, that, it was second it was career kind of people? Almost all second career. Is that yeah, right? Very, very uh, mm -hmm. second career oriented. And some of those are early second mm -hmm. careers, people mm -hmm. in their early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, but some were, some mm -hmm. were much older second career folks. Did um, you have three years of seminary? Yep, three years. We started in July mm -hmm. with just Greek intensive mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the summer. Mm -hmm. And then three full years, including one extra summer. Oh, uh, and, and what do you do about an internship, or do you not do an, in, or is that a part of the three years? It's a, it's a part of the school requirements, mm -hmm. not necessarily the denominational. So the denomination and the school kind of have two separate requirements, although I can't imagine any presbytery, one of our local mm -hmm. governing bodies, allowing somebody mm -hmm. to be ordained without an internship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's run as a part of the, a part of the school's requirements. Mm -hmm. And uh, my school required one uh, congregational internship that could either be full-time over the summer mm. or part-time over a school year. Mm. And uh, since I, when I started seminary, I was um, not thinking towards parish ministry, mm -hmm. um, really mm -hmm. serving a congregation. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more internationally. Mm -hmm. um, they allowed me to do my congregational internship in Kenya. Really? So uh, ordinarily they used that for students that had already done an, an American mm -hmm. 
uh, internship mm -hmm. or, or had some other church experience. But since I was declaring that I wasn't going to be mm -hmm. in a church, they mm -hmm. said, well, fine, then you can, mm -hmm. you can do this since your interest is going to be in mm -hmm. these kinds of ministries. Um, so I spent the summer of uh, 2000 in, uh, in uh, Ngecha Parish, which is uh, kind of northwest of Nairobi about... I, can, I know it in time more than distance, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean much in, these, mm -hmm. in our parts, but uh, mm -hmm. it was about a, probably about a 50-mile drive north of mm -hmm. Nairobi, um, serving uh, alongside a pastor who had, uh, we had seven congregations in our parish, um, one that was English-speaking and, and Swahili and Kukuyu, the language of that, of that particular area, and then others that were uh, ranged to way out uh, accessible only by foot and um, really far out in the bush a little bit more. Good experience? Fantastic experience. Yeah. So how do you feel about what's going on in Nairobi right now? Yeah, I, um, I, I'm still in contact with some of the folks. There's one young man who lived kind of nearby that I was a good mm -hmm. friend of while I served there mm -hmm. um, that we have stayed in contact since then for 13 years. He works mm -hmm. at a university, so he has email access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but since then, I've been in contact through, they have a Facebook page for the young adult group. Mm -hmm. And so I connect there and kind of mm -hmm. stay in contact. And I actually uh, um, wrote to them on Sunday to offer up my prayers and my thoughts for what was going on and asked if they would contribute a prayer for our congregation mm -hmm. this week, um, mm -hmm. how, how they are praying for what's mm -hmm. going on and how mm -hmm. that's going. Um, and so they did that and it was, it was fantastic. But uh, uh, it's, it's hard. It's a, it's, a, it's a tricky society. Mm -hmm. It's um, uh, there's a lot of corruption in, mm -hmm. in the government and the communities mm -hmm. around there, mm -hmm. um, and and deeply divided on some racial and ethnic and mm -hmm. uh, religious lines. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just it's hard to watch and, mm -hmm. and, and see it drag on and, and mm -hmm. not know what's what's going to happen next. And I should probably comment to you that as yeah. we're taping this, uh, we're just sort of at the end of the terrorist attack at a mall in Nairobi, uh, Kenya. And that's the context of, uh, of this question. When you say racial uh, animus, what, mm -hmm. uh, what racial groups are at odds with each other? Um, there are s there's some very strong divides in Kenya. And, and, and I, I should say it's been a while since I've been mm -hmm. more immersed in, in the culture. But um, there's an a, a, a Indian population in, from in Kenya India. from India, but they've been there for hundreds of years. Really? Um, that you know, caravans that were doing trade mm -hmm. routes, and so there are very different. So that's kind of ethnic and racial mm -hmm. differences. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess and and there's a expatriate population mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. some that are still there's still some British colonialism mm -hmm. kinds mm -hmm. of feelings that are mm -hmm. there. Um, mm -hmm. That there's some there's some tension between, and a lot mm -hmm. of it ends up being about socioeconomic mm -hmm. class too. And how are Christians? treated in Kenya? Christians are, uh, I, don't, I wish I knew better numbers, but they're, they're a majority mm. in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the population. Mm. And so, um, so in my experience, it was a mostly Christian community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, so it was, it was, it was the norm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't have any real sense of any difference, but I know that there's some tension, certainly. Well. Anyway, it was a little yeah. bit of an aside, but <laughs> uh, it's a delight to hear that uh, background. Yeah. And how would you say that that has uh, affected your ministry to this day? Those oh, sure. three months there, what, what, yeah. what's, what's the takeaway that still lingers with you? Sure. Well, the, uh, that was really a big part of my realization that I did want to end up in an, an American parish mm -hmm. setting. Part of that being I was there alone. I was... 25, 26 years old, mm -hmm. uh, not even 24, um, and serving in a in a in a foreign context, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's extremely lonely work. It mm -hmm. takes it's it takes a very special person mm -hmm. to be able to do that, and, mm -hmm. and I knew that I would not want to go back mm -hmm. there alone, mm -hmm. um, not out of safety or fear, mm -hmm. but it's just a mm -hmm. it's a hard thing to to experience mm -hmm. on your own. Mm -hmm. um, but what I also learned while I was there, the, the parish that I served had some relationships with a couple other mm. um, congregations in the U.S. And one because uh, one of their young men had gone to study in Philadelphia. And so the church that he became a part of started to have some connections. And uh, so we had two different kind of mission trip groups that came to visit us. Mm -hmm. And I was on the side of the hosting community as opposed to the serving community in a sense. 
but I loved the role I played of of doing some cultural interpretation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, helping the Americans understand some things that, you know, somebody reacted to them in a way that they mm -hmm. didn't get. But mm -hmm. I'd been there for two months and mm -hmm. I could say, oh, this is what that's mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why they keep asking mm -hmm. you about the mm -hmm. weather. They ask mm -hmm. you about the weather a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I liked that role of, of, of being between the two worlds and, mm -hmm. and helping facilitate those kinds of conversations. and. Uh, and so that helped me move towards ministry in the sense that I thought, well, gosh, I want to be the one who brings people on these sorts mm -hmm. of experiences. So I thought mm -hmm. about it very concretely in that sense. Because also after those folks left, I just, I just mourned, not knowing what happened next in their lives, yeah. not knowing how it affected them. Mm -hmm. I had that same experience when I served as a student chaplain in a hospital. Mm -hmm. I had uh, intense experiences of ministry and, mm -hmm. and understanding the Spirit of God mm -hmm. in a room. Mm -hmm. And then somebody was discharged and I'd never mm -hmm. hear from again. Mm -hmm. um, so the continuity was really important to mm -hmm. me. And that was the first kind of impulse into wanting to be in parish ministry. But the experience has lasted beyond that mm -hmm. in ways I didn't mm -hmm. anticipate in this role that I still serve mm -hmm. um, between, I don't want to sound like an intercessory kind of a position, but as somebody who gets to spend all my day mm -hmm. <laughs> thinking about scripture and mm -hmm. thinking about faith and thinking mm -hmm. about theology, mm -hmm. um, interfacing with people who don't get paid to do that all day, mm -hmm. um, I still get to do that same kind of mm -hmm. role. Play, mm -hmm. play this, not, like I said, not an intercessory, not that I stand between mm -hmm. people, but that I get to help interpret um, the, the life of a person with scripture and scripture into the life of a person. Mm -hmm. So I never would have anticipated that even for five, six, seven years ago. That mm -hmm. still hadn't quite struck me that mm -hmm. the experience is very similar. It's a cross-cultural thing either way. And when you got back and graduated from the mm -hmm. seminary, then what? What happens? How does a Presbyterian sure. system work? How do they? How do you get to the first yeah. place? <laughs> um, in our, the, usually about the beginning of our last year, third mm -hmm. year of seminary, we start to take some standardized ordination exams, mm -hmm. and those are mm -hmm. those are standardized across the country. Written exams. There's mm -hmm. four, and I think it's changed a little bit even mm -hmm. since I've been there. Um, five exams total that you have to pass mm -hmm. um, to be ready for ordination, mm -hmm. um, and then some verbal exams on the floor of your of your local uh, judicatory or presbytery and then you're certified ready to receive a call and uh, can throw your throw your name out there we have a standardized sort of resume form um, the churches have a standardized information form and they all get thrown into a computer to match things about number and geography if mm -hmm. there's if you know if you're limited to only mm -hmm. serve in a certain area of the country mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. they can cut those out and you can self refer mm -hmm. to any congregation that you know is looking mm -hmm. um, that's open i was again i was i was single in georgia and didn't want to stay in the south mm -hmm. so that was um, that helped me a lot of the folks end up going to a seminary near where you plan mm -hmm. to serve mm -hmm. for family mm -hmm. reasons or other reasons mm -hmm. but i was wide open to going pretty much anywhere mm -hmm and uh, ended up accepting a call to a congregation in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even know where Lincoln was. <laughs> so I flew into Omaha and figured out that you could drive there and <laughs> uh, ended up serving in Lincoln for, um, for about five, five and a half years. Um, but I was approved to receive a call by the end of October, um, entered into those conversations starting in January, February, and, and knew on the day of graduation that I was, going. yeah, I was moving two days later. Um, some folks it takes longer. I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for and what your what your skill set is, and and what the call what the call ends up being. So, how long did it take you to sort of get sucked into the University of Nebraska football? <laughs> uh, about the same long as it took me to get engaged and married, which was a couple months. <laughs> um, I, it was a little hard because there was a little bit of tension between the Florida Gators and the Huskers at the time, or not it, on their side there wasn't much, but on our side there was. But we've agreed to uh, root for each other as long as they're not playing each other. So I'm sucked in. <laughs> and how did you meet your husband? Um, he, my husband was actually a member of the congregation mm -hmm. where I served, had been uh, worshiping there through college. His great aunt was a member of the church, so he would uh, go to campus ministry worship on mm -hmm. Sunday morning and then go over to hers or maybe the other way around, go over and worship with his great aunt, um, who, uh, who he had a great relationship, has a great relationship with. And so he was a, a member at the church and sort of got introduced and and uh, walked that line uh, very carefully for a while, but we did meet uh, immediately and were married about a year after I after I was serving there. So is he from Nebraska? Yeah, yeah, born and raised in central Nebraska. Is it what town? Uh, Lexington. Oh yeah. 
Green Valley. Nice little town, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good place. And he likes Hudson? Yeah, yeah, okay. he does. Yeah, we couldn't go anywhere that we weren't both going to be happy, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he loves it. And what show, what, why did you decide to leave Lincoln, which is quite a, actually a fairly large cosmopolitan uh, area for the yeah, Midwest? Yeah, and, and especially as it blends more and more with mm -hmm, Omaha, it mm -hmm, gets even more mm -hmm, busy. Mm -hmm. um, we had, I had been there about five years. Um, I had started to sense that, that the things that I was called there mm -hmm. to do were done, or as done as they were going to get with me in mm -hmm, place. Mm -hmm. um, the congregation was also starting to uh, struggle financially in mm -hmm, some ways, mm -hmm. and so they were coming to the realization about the time that I was already kind of making my way mm -hmm. of looking other places mm -hmm. um, that they were going to need to end one of their staff mm -hmm. positions, mm -hmm. and they had quite a few staff positions, mm -hmm. uh, two pastors but other non-ordained mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I spoke with them about, you know, mm -hmm. we, can, we can work together on mm -hmm. this, and it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be hard for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I, I can make my exit and mm -hmm. help you save a little money and, mm -hmm. and, and move on in my call. So we did that. What does your spouse do now? Phil is a research economist, and he worked in Lincoln, uh, as he does here in the Department of Revenue at, oh. the, at the state capitol. So he's in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Uh, does revenue forecasting and mm -hmm. sort of the research side of things and mm -hmm. policy analysis for, for tax mm -hmm. policies. Mm -hmm. Is he a typical numbers guy, kind of quiet? And yes. Is there, is he? <laughs> yeah, that fits. So, so in your case, it, it, did God work out the complimentary thing where each of you sort of filled the space <laughs> of the Probably, <laughs> probably. Sometimes I fill up too much space. But, <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's some of that. That's great. Yeah. But he likes it here, and the commute's not too yeah. bad. Oh, no, and he's there, you know, he works good yeah. hours that he can get in and out. Now here's a question, I hope it's not sexist. You tell me if it is. <laughs> uh, so you have three children? Mm -hmm. three ch were they all born here, by the way? No, only, only our youngest was born here. The other two, the were, other born two were born in, in Lincoln. In Lincoln. Yep. How old were they when you got here? How long have you been here, what, five been years? Been here six years six in January, wow. come up in six. So when we moved, um, William was six months and Caroline was two and a half. Oh yeah. Um, so and you just had a baby. Yeah, you? well, she's three now, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So she was born here in Hudson. Mm -hmm. The youngest, Margaret, was, was three now, and she mm -hmm. was born in Hudson. So how do you juggle all the responsibilities? Mm -hmm. And do you think it's harder for a female than a male to be a Presbyterian preacher? Uh, I think it, I have this conversation a lot, I think it depends a whole lot on um, the congregation itself mm -hmm. and, and even the expectations within the marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, uh, I, I like to say that Phil has the steady job. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, well, he probably takes homework with him in the, mm -hmm. in his mind, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have, mm -hmm. it's, when he's out, he's out. He's a state employee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he doesn't get to do overtime. Mm -hmm. So he's got the hours we can count on for mm -hmm. the most part. Mm -hmm. um, I have the crazy hours mm -hmm. that can be mm -hmm. all over the map. And mm -hmm. so, um, so he is home when the kids get home from school, mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I'm home when the kids get home Wednesday and Friday's my day off, so I'm mm -hmm. there. Thursdays they go to child care, the ones that are in school, and, mm -hmm. and so um, for us, I don't think it's it's been too hard, mm -hmm. but I know that that's not really the norm. Mm -hmm. I think it is difficult. I think mm -hmm. there's expectations, um, whether it comes from the marriage itself mm -hmm. or from the congregation or mm -hmm. society beyond, mm -hmm. on a lot of women who are in ministry that you also have to be mm -hmm. the number one caregiver and mm -hmm. the housekeeper and, and mm -hmm. all these other standards. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have... Mm -hmm. We knew what we were getting into. Mm -hmm. I think that helped. Mm -hmm. He married mm -hmm. me when I was already a pastor, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not like we had to change mm -hmm. our expectations. Um, and, and, and it really, I think, has worked out very well for us. Um, but I know that that's, that's, that's not the experience that I hear um, other sisters in ministry talking about. That there's a lot more. We have a congregation that is, that is there to help us out if if something happens time wise and. I can't get there, or um, we, you know, I, I recently started serving on the chaplain corps with the county sheriff's office, mm -hmm. and that means I could get called out at three in the morning, mm -hmm. and my husband has to leave for work mm -hmm. at five, mm -hmm. and I've got a list of phone numbers that I keep by my bed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I could call of people who will show up to make we'll that happen. Up. That it's part of our ministry together. Just as an aside, who organized this chaplaincy program? Uh, Larry Larry Simon oh, from did. Faith. Yeah, great. And is it for the sheriff and the local police, or just just so the? So currently, uh, it's just the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, as I understand, that there's there's some talk of starting to spread into EMS mm -hmm. and local police departments if they're open to it. Also. Wow. So, Do they provide a car? 
Uh, no, that uh, would be so fun. You, yeah, it would be. <laughs> no, and, no. And, and you're on call how often? We're how on call. There? There's five of us right now for the mm -hmm. whole county, mm -hmm. and uh, we're so we're on call about every five weeks. We mm -hmm. sort of book out two or three months at a time mm -hmm. and pick the number of weeks that mm -hmm. that fit us. Mm -hmm. um, and we're on call for a week at a time. Uh, we try to do ride-alongs mm -hmm. in that time frame, mm -hmm. or at least every other time frame. Every other time we're on call, um, and then get called to to various. Concerns that come up in the county as they're as they're needed. And who gave you the training, and where did you get it? Uh, Larry, I think, was the one who found it, or maybe one of the police officers. But uh, Minnesota has uh, a group called MESCA, Minnesota Emergency Services Chaplain mm -hmm. Association, mm -hmm. and they do a phenomenal, yeah. a phenomenal training. Yeah. I went to the training and said, even if I never get to serve in our mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. that was worth the three days. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. a fantastic training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, that group really formed after the uh, bridge collapse oh. mm -hmm. uh, when, when they, uh, mm -hmm. different people were trying to respond in different ways mm -hmm. and how are we going to standardize who mm -hmm. gets to help on the scene mm -hmm. and, and kind of mm -hmm. control some of that. Mm -hmm. And so they have a lot of great experience and, and knowledge. Now looking ahead 20 years, your children <laughs> will be married maybe <laughs> out of school and you'll be uh, uh, somewhat more mature. Where, where do you hope <laughs> to? I hope not <laughs> too much. <laughs> what? Where do you hope to be? Oh gosh, twenty years. I, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, there, we. Uh, my husband's family farms in Central Nebraska, oh, and uh, if anyone in the family takes that over from mm -hmm. his father, it will be us. And Is so that there's right? a yeah. He's the he's the only sibling who's really that. That interested in doing it he full likes time. Farming. Yeah, yeah. His, he grew up on the farm. Grew up, yeah. The oldest of the three, so did a lot of work on the farm. Is and, that right? Um, it was a beef operation at the time, and now it's all crop. It's just all agriculture. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, if anyone, if anyone does it, it'll be us. Is that right? And, and how does uh, that, how does that appeal to you? It, it's a whole different world than I have ever <laughs> imagined. But he knew what he was getting into when he married me, and I knew what I was getting into. I, I, I like the ideas of it in a number of ways. It'll be a whole new world when and if it happens. Um, um, but but there's there's it's it's a different place. It'll be mm -hmm. a, it'll be a different thing. But I, I mm -hmm. look forward to the to the to the possibility of it. We'll Your see if it happens. Your kids like going. To, uh, to the they farm. do. They do. They uh, uh, they like they get like going to places. My parents are in Florida and do uh -huh. a, a much more urban kind of cosmopolitan sort of life, and mm -hmm. then they go to Nebraska and have an mm -hmm. entirely different. Mm -hmm. um, Caroline loves learning to sew. She told me she knew how to use a serger, and I didn't even know what a serger was. That's what she did this summer when she was there. Yeah. I said, fine, <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> you won't get help at home. No. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. Uh, William will spend an entire day riding the trucks and the tractors mm -hmm. and the semis with Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All day, loves it. he yeah, and he thinks he knows it. He's six, mm -hmm. and he thinks he knows everything mm -hmm. that's going on on that mm -hmm. farm, and mm -hmm. will participate in the discussions like he has a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he does. I don't know. It's great. If we yeah. talk about elevators. He says the people elevator or the food elevator, mom. I'm like, we're gonna go on the people one in this restaurant. You know, <laughs> that's good. He well, knows, he knows like his a lingo. six-year-old to keep you humble. You yeah, know? right, right. He knows his lingo. He tries it out. And the local parish. What is your hope for it? Would you say in the next five or ten years? Uh, my hope for uh, for First Presbyterian Church that that we're that we're living into more and more, um, and, and sort of the the goal of my ministry at this point is really to help cultivate a community um, of people who have the confidence to follow God, mm -hmm. um, and and not just uh, to trust their imagination to trust their dreams, to, to trust the whispering of the Spirit enough to say, this is what I think we're called to do as a congregation. This is who we are called to be, and I'm going to figure out how to do it. Um, it's it's uh, the history of the church, and there's probably people in this community that know it a lot better than I do, and that's mm -hmm. been okay for me. <laughs> I've, I've allowed that to be the, the, the way it is. Um, but, but there's been some uh, new growth and uh, new life and, and newer folks in the church family who may not have the, the, the history with this particular congregation, mm -hmm. or any congregation mm -hmm. for that matter, mm -hmm. that, are, that are newer in their adult life uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, being members of churches. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this empowering of people that it's not about showing up and, and being fed. I was just reading a, a blog post recently about don't come to church to be fed. <laughs> come to church to, to feed others, to be a part of this community that, that does something else. Um, 
And so there's still a lot of hesitancy about what can we do, what are we allowed to do, or gee, I would love to tackle this thing, but nobody's doing it yet. And so then there's a hesit hesitancy to get involved. Um, what I would see as a success is a group of people who see um, a ministry within the church that needs to happen. And it just, it just happened in the last month or so. We've, had, we've been rebuilding, <laughs> like football team. We're in our rebuilding years mm -hmm. of youth group. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody said, you know what, we need to have an event for our youth. We mm -hmm. need to have a lock-in. And mm -hmm. I didn't have to come up with the idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't say mm -hmm. and tap people. Mm -hmm. They thought about it. They mm -hmm. saw the need. They created it. Mm -hmm. They carried it out. And they mm -hmm. had a splendid night for, for our youth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was the most exciting thing to see. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope to see us doing more and more. Mm -hmm. People not asking for permission to be mm -hmm. ministers, mm -hmm. but, but seeing themselves in, mm -hmm. in that role. And our Presbyterian church is so ground up. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. I have an ordination. Our elders in our church are ordained. Our deacons are mm -hmm. ordained. Mm -hmm. We have equal ordinations. There's mm -hmm. not a hierarchy in, mm -hmm. in the Presbyterian church. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we don't have bishops. We, <laughs> groups decide everything. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm a, a leader because of the role that I have, mm -hmm. but not because of any power mm -hmm. that I have or status. In mm -hmm. fact, the only thing I can choose is a Presbyterian minister. Mm -hmm. that the, the rights that are given to me by our Constitution is to choose the scripture that I mm -hmm. preach on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. to actually write that sermon myself, mm -hmm. I have that authority, mm -hmm. and the hymns that we sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything else that I have, mm -hmm. I have any authority over is because the church has given it to me. Mm -hmm. It's not a right of my ordination. I don't, I don't have any of those. Yeah. It is the local congregation that is designed um, to, to be the ministers. Yeah. And so teaching folks some of our own understanding, mm -hmm. our, who we are as Presbyterians mm -hmm. who weren't raised with that, mm -hmm. or even those who were that hadn't mm -hmm. seen it played out in a number of years, mm -hmm. um, to the point that people own this, that it's mm -hmm. not Stephanie's ministry mm -hmm. or even necessarily just the church's ministry, mm -hmm. but that they have their own mm -hmm. ministry is, is certainly one of my goals. You know, I'm a, a sociologist, and our biggest struggle, our mind when I, be, when I became a pastor, was, was to differentiate between role and status, mm, mm. and to convince the people that we're called to serve yeah. that, that status has no place in the Christian church, sure, which is sure. a rank ordering right. of people. Right. You know, in, in the Christian church, we're all the same. Yep. And yep. Uh, but we have different roles. Yep. But just because. You have this rule and somebody exactly. else has this doesn't mean they're right. any different. And that is so embedded in our Presbyterian theology. Uh -huh. that, I mean, that's 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 what that's what we've that's what we say. Making that a reality is <laughs> that's a little the different. problem. I mean, it's embedded <laughs> yeah. in I think many yeah. theology. At sure. least the non-episcopal. Sure. Yeah. Well, sure. Uh, I imagine it is. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, it's a stinker. But anyway, <laughs> you know, you got to have some challenges out there. You had mentioned early on your time in Kenya. Have you thought or has anybody asked you to take a group uh, to some international place? Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't had that opportunity quite yet. We tried to get together a group that would go, not, a, not in, a, in that same context, but a, a pilgrimage trip to, uh, to uh, Israel and Jordan this, this fall. It mm -hmm. didn't quite come through with the numbers mm -hmm. of people that we needed. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I haven't yet uh, uh, found a way to take a group more internationally mission oriented. In my last congregation, about the same time that I arrived, um, the Sudanese population was immigrating in and coming mm -hmm. in as refugees. Mm -hmm. And there was a very large Sudanese mm -hmm. population in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And they uh, literally showed up on the doorsteps of the Presbyterian church and said, uh, we're Presbyterian because you guys came to us. And here we are. We're your people. <laughs> You're our people. And so uh, it was. A, it was a very difficult struggle culturally, and trying to figure out how to make that work. But as uh, I thought, as I was interviewing there, and as I was called to that place, that there might be some um, chances for for international mission opportunity there. But it was so. Um, it wasn't developing in the time yeah. frame that I was there. Yeah. It was a lot yeah. more of the groundwork. We have a. Um, a tendency uh, in different Presbyterian churches that do it different ways, mm -hmm. but my. I had some experience in the mission agencies of our denomination even mm -hmm. before Kenya that um, we, have, we have definitely moved towards an understanding of mission that we empower the people who are, who are there. Mm -hmm. We empower the churches mm -hmm. that exist. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the role of um, one and done kinds of mm -hmm. mission trips I, I struggle with mm -hmm. a little bit. And mm -hmm. as a denomination, we mm -hmm. uh, support and encourage mm -hmm. um, partnerships that are lasting for years. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and even in the first three or four years of mm -hmm. that relationship, they don't 
encourage mm -hmm. folks to go and do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but just to be in prayer and in conversation mm -hmm. with each mm -hmm. other. I, I'm, I'm drawn to that. I also have this sense of, but gosh, it's, there can be really life-changing things mm -hmm. that happen when people mm -hmm. go for a week and come mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. I struggle back and forth with that, mm -hmm. so haven't, we haven't gone anywhere yet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a hard one because you know, as having lived in a culture for months rather than days, yeah. it, it makes quite a difference. Yeah, yeah even sure does. even years if you live yeah, in a place. Yeah, I mean, the nuances of any culture are so ingrained yeah, in the people who are born there. But for the rest of us, yeah. why we remain uh, yeah. dummies for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Liz and I used to call it a stupid tax. That yeah, we, that we pay all <laughs> yeah, the time. Right, that's very true. <laughs> Yeah. Well, is there anything you would like the uh, people that we're talking to today to know about you that I haven't harassed you about already? <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. Um, I have a, it's exciting to be in, in ministry here in Hudson. Um, I have found a, uh, a culture and a, a town and a geography that feels like home that I didn't no, I didn't have. <laughs> I felt a little like a wanderer in Florida. And Nebraska felt a little bit more home, and and just there's something about the sense of this place um, that I that I really love. Um, and it's interesting to be in a place where I feel home, but also um, know that I'm I'm not. I haven't been mm -hmm. here. <laughs> I'm not one yeah. of the families. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's so there's a sense of uh, of being a little bit on the outside that I that 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 I like in terms of. Um, yeah you know, analyzing and understanding a culture I can get from the outside a little bit. Um, but but uh, we love it here, and I like being in ministry here. Um, it's been fun to be a part of a congregation that uh, that is, uh, it's diverse in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, mm -hmm. we, we've got folks who think on a lot of different spectrums mm -hmm. that all are in the same mm -hmm. place, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty proud of that. Mm -hmm. I think we may have gotten there by choosing not to talk about some of those things that are diverse, and I hope to be moving that a little bit more. And let's be in be in this community together, despite the fact that we know what everybody thinks on on different topics. And so that's been fun, um, moving that direction a little bit. There's to nothing bring. wrong with operating under a truce from time to time. <laughs> yeah, and that, there may have been some sense of that even in the, in the congregation's history, but, but, but um, we've developed a lot of good relationships, and there's people who love, love each other a great That's deal, right. and uh, I think we can move into some of those places that are shadier for Midwesterners to talk about <laughs> in public <laughs> and, uh, and, and try to see where that goes. Takes time. Yeah. Well, we're delighted you're here. I'm very grateful that you've been so kind as I've oh, been sitting you. here and asking you all sorts of questions right off the top of my head that you didn't <laughs> know anything about. And I think your grace and charm are wonderful attributes Thanks. to ministry. And we Thanks. thank uh, God for placing you here. Thank you. So Me have too. a great weekend and we'll talk again soon, I hope. Thanks. Yes, we and, will. And thanks to all of you and we'll see you again too. Thanks. That's it. Alrighty. Was that so bad? No. You know how many minutes went Let's by? Let's keep going. Probably 30.